at that crowd and tell me what's going through your mind. Woo! I tell you, what, what an unbelievable feeling to, uh, to, to be home, to have this kind of welcome. You know, no matter what happens in this tournament, man, it, it makes me emotional to know that all these people out here love the sport of fishing. Growing up, I wanted to be a pro bass fisherman since I was five years old. Everybody thought I was crazy. You know what? I did it! Michael Iaconelli in his element with this crowd. He told you backstage, Mark Zona, what we do up here is we yell at each other. And I don't know, Tommy Sanders, he's actually one of the quieter people in that city. Absolutely. He really is. He's, he's sort of a shrinking violet among He called folks. himself a hidden gem. Absolutely, and that he is, only not so well hidden on this final day. 12 anglers on this final day. They're going to get eight hours of fishing on the Delaware River. How they've dealt with it each day up to now will change because that tide, what happened at 7 a.m. yesterday, happens at 8 a.m. today. The timing is all different everywhere you go on this body of water. Exactly right, and, and here's the best way to put it. He has to slip for our anglers to do oh. some damage here, but we did see that on day number one with Boyd Duckett. Absolutely. He's got a six and a half pound lead over that man you just saw right there, Bill Lowe and the rest of them. Just hoping, as you say, for something, well, cataclysmic to happen to Iconelli. If we watched him on day number three, which we did, we know that he's going to have to really take a tumble in order for something to shake up on the leaderboard. And an interesting twist of events here on the final day of competition. Iconelli actually going to start out on the main river where he caught him later in the morning on day number three, and well, he gets to his first primary spot, and that's where we watched him catch him early on day number three. Well, he would stay there for a little bit, and then he would go to the back of Woodbury Creek where he started his day. Basically, he kind of flip-flopped his game plan. He just did not like what he saw out on the main river. You know, we started this morning, I had a hunch that the main river was gonna be the deal. Um, Got out there and fished three pieces. Took about 20 minutes to fish three separate pieces on the main river. It wasn't happening. The one thing I noticed out there, the water was low. I liked that, but what I didn't like was the water was dirty. A lot of times mud in that main river shuts the fish off. So instead of bogging around out there, we're gonna make a switch here. We immediately went into a creek. The first thing I noticed right on in is that water cleared up. So, you know, hopefully this was the right decision. We're gonna try in the creek for a little bit. If that doesn't work, we'll switch gears again. It's seven o'clock and we've got a dead low in this creek at about 8.30, so we've got an hour and a half of outgoing water. That's awesome. The one negative that we have in here is that we have a, a super moon this week, a big giant full moon really close to the earth, and that's sucking the water down extra low. And sometimes it can make navigation in these creeks tough, and that's, that's more of a challenge up here than anything is getting to the fish. There's one. There's a big one. Ah! Woo! God, it's starting to day out with a three pounder! Woo! Decisions, man! Decisions, man! Decisions! Woo! God, it's all about decisions on this tidal water. Tidal water. Three and a half pound largemouth. Little itsy bitsy jig with that chigger crawl in the back. <clears throat> Forget about it. Woo! Look at that thing! What? Woo! Look at that thing! Oh my god! <laughs> decisions, decisions, decisions. Trust your gut. The biggest lesson I could give people about fishing is trust your instincts, man. If it wasn't happening on the main river, don't stick to your history. Get out of there. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Three and a half pounder. Yeah! Man hugs. Man hugs all around. What a start. Get your kicker out of the way early. Golly. Dude, a three and a half pounder on a Delaware is like catching a seven pounder anywhere else. Caught a lot of two pounders off of this log, but never a three. 
Oh my gosh, thank you, God. Michael Iconelli, ecstatic. You heard him after he boated the fish. He holds up his, his bait, puts it down, and says, forget about it. That might have been a signal to the rest of these anglers in pursuit of him. But they're not going to take that as the final word. Believe you me, we got plenty more guys to watch out here today. Woo! I'm just going to tell you, that's not really the way you want to start your morning out on the final day. At the <laughs> baptism. <laughs> How about the only other angler to win on tidal water this season, Chris Lane down at the St. Johns River, and then there's Shaw Grigsby. Absolutely, Rancocas Creek has been a major player for Shaw Grigsby all week, and he said, if I could just figure out how to catch him on high tide, that's been the biggest problem. See Bill Lowe, and he is actually a few hundred yards away from Grigsby, but here's the only problem these anglers have. They are dividing fish back on the main river. Out on the main river, Byron Velvet, slow, quiet, and steady all week long. Byron Velvick among the 12 who are out there on this final day trying to make something big time happen in order to run down our leader, Michael Iconelli. Can they do it? A lot of fishing left on this fourth day of competition on the Delaware River. Take a quick look at our leaderboard and there's Iconelli having extended his lead from six and a half pounds to eight and a half pounds over Bill Lowen. But as we say, more fishing yet to come. We'll be back on the Delaware in just a moment. The Bassmaster Elite Series at the Delaware River in Philadelphia is brought to you by Evan Williams Bourbon. Yamaha. And by Skeeter Boats. Bassmaster Elite Series from the Delaware River and its tributaries. That's the operative word here. Shaw Grigsby has found the shallow water in one of those tributaries. Well, he's definitely done that, and that was a common theme throughout this entire week. And, Tommy, I hate to do it to Shaw Grigsby, the nicest man on planet sure. Earth, but that is our Evan Williams bourbon shot of the day. Oh, no way. Well, absolutely. You're right there. No one wants that to be their shot of the day, but Shaw Grigsby trying to get out of Rancocas Creek there and finally succeeding at long last. Shaw Grigsby, of course, who went from four pounds to 14 pounds on day number two, still solidly in the top five as we head over to Skeet Reese, another man who at this tournament has improved his fortunes. Exactly, and he had the exact same thing happen on day number one and lost, well, he lost about a quarter to almost half of his day fishing. Really, day number one, when he caught four bass, that saved his entire season. Right. Ski Reese rising throughout yes. this tournament, but the main thing, whenever you're fishing a river system that's tough, you better put them all in the boat. Yep, yep, you can't waste time getting from one place to another, and you can't no, miss any fish. Know. You put it all right there, and Skeet Reese doing good on this final day, no. but uh, gosh, every one of those missed fish takes him farther and farther away from the leader, Michael Iconelli. But yet another top finish for Skeet Reese on a tidal body of water. And over to Jason Christie, and we said it, this man has been on fire, not this year, but really the last three years. A lot of anglers thinking about this event, this final day, but you start to hear that one thing creep in their head, and that is Angler of the Year. Already being in the Classic, that was the goal when I came here. I, uh, you know, I didn't have any history here. The first thing I didn't want to do was lose ground. But to be able to make up some ground, you know, and have two chances left uh, to still make up some points, I mean, that's that's right where I want to be. I mean, I, it looks like I'll be sixth or seventh after the event's over with, even if I don't catch a fish. So I'm 20, I'll be 20 something points behind and that's, that's doable, especially, you know, that last event, there's gonna be a lot of, that's big water. So anything could happen on that last event. Inside the mouth, big bait. Thought that was a big one. 
Jason Christie having a good tournament here in Philadelphia. Obviously a great season with the win he picked up at Dardanelle. You see how he figures in the all-important and ever more important Toyota Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Top 12 right there. we got a couple of rookies in the mix. Morgan Taylor, Peroznik. You can see the guys who have helped their causes this week, especially Skeet Reese being among them. But we look, Mark Zona, at the list, and it does not look it's right at the top the way it looked at the halfway point. Really, I think, I think the biggest slip of the year has been Mark Davis. And really, if you look at the beginning of Mark Davis's year, third, third, second, fourth, hold on, you ready? Ooh. Lake Darnell, the 81st, that's, that's what started the momentum on the downturn, sitting in seventh place right now. But that has left the door open for guys like this right here. Defending angler of the year, Aaron Martins, just consistency. There's no bombs in there. But here's where I want you to look. 563 points goes to our leader right now, Greg Hackney. And let's just look at his points real quick. 564. He has a one point lead with two events left. And, and, and real quick, let's not take out the guys that are behind these two. Oh, no. You look at a Skeet Reese, a Keith Combs, Todd Faircloth. Todd Faircloth. Wide open. Out to Michael Iaconelli last time we checked, an eight pound plus lead over his nearest pursuer. Today, we're at the timing not quite as good as it was on day number three. Well, Iaconelli bouncing around a lot, fishing in the backs of creeks, going back to the main river. And the one thing on the main river, he said, hard objects next to the main river channel where the hardest current is, that's where these fish will set up. But so far, kind of slow picking. Wow, where are you at? <sighs> and there's nowhere else for him to go. It's like the it's like the last hard thing they've got. It splits this giant eelgrass, bud. It's a perfect spot for when it's a blowout tide, which is what we have. Big one. Finally, three days, three freaking days. Woo! Come right off too. Two pound, two and a half pounder. Yeah. Two and a half. Big moment right there. Big moment right there for me. That was a big moment. Three days, three days I've hit this place. Finally, finally one showed up. Whew, Lord. Oh, I'm confident now. If there's, if you, this is the kind of place that there's one, there's, there's more. So now I'm going to just slow down a little bit. This is the time to take your sweatshirt off. Michael Iaconelli, after the fast start at the start of this final day, got a moment to breathe for just a second, rethink his options. We're watching the rest of these yeah. anglers, all of them looking to get three big ones in the boat and maybe have a shot at running down our leader. Time's a waste and not much fishing time left. Woo! Yeah! It's $100,000! We're back from Philadelphia. Main culinary contribution to the world, the cheesesteak. Oh. oh, they're nice, but that's not all that Philadelphia has to offer. So many iconic places to visit here. So important in the history of these here United States. What a wonderful destination for the Bassmaster Elite Series and what a big day this is. The fourth and final day of this four-day tournament. $100,000 on the line and also doing very well this week. Doing well all season long. Kind of sneaking into the top 20. And Angler of the Year points yeah. is Scott Rook. He's made a couple of top 20s this year, one of them on our other tidal fishery, the St. John's River. Exactly right from Rook. We're going to head over to John Cruz. And quietly, really, the last three years, John Cruz, one of the most consistent anglers on the Elite Series, no stranger to rivers growing up in Virginia. Right, another eastern seaboard guy doing very, very well here on the Delaware River. We've got New Jersey across the river. We've got Philadelphia on one side. You go further down the state of Delaware. Hey, 
How about this young man here having his best tournament of the year? Chad Pipkins came out of the gate real well on day number one with 11 pounds plus and has held his own since then to remain in this top 12. Exactly right. Trust me when I tell you, Chad Pipkins very happy. There's a turn right now of events heading up north. We're from Pipkins over to Kevin Short. Here's the amazing thing about Kevin Short right now. Missed an entire Bassmaster Elite Series event. His house was ravaged by a tornado earlier and still has got himself in contention to make next year's Bassmaster Classic. Oh, that's right, you do not throw out an event when you're trying to get to the Classic, but that's a testament to the good year that Kevin Short has had. A uh, good year and a bad year when you look at it overall. And Sean Grigsby made that huge move on day number two based on a change he made in the way his tackle was written. Well, on day number one, he lost a lot of fish. His, his bullet weight was pegged to the top of his hook. He said, well, day number two, I unpegged it. He has not lost a bass since. And not only that, Shaw Grigsby just rises up in tough tournaments. You look at Wissota, Chicago, the Mississippi River. Whenever it's a grinders tournament, Shaw Grigsby is at the top. Golly, what have I got? It's big. It's a big bass. Thank you, Jesus. Look at that one. That is a big old pig. Wow. You nailed it, Tommy Sanders. Shaw Grigsby changing that one little thing, unpegging his weight, has not lost one bass since the first day of competition. That is a huge fish for Shaw Grigsby. How about Chris Lane? The classic champ won a tournament earlier this year, had his boat burned up at Dardanelle, his life beginning to resemble a country song. <laughs> exactly right. Here's the amazing thing. Chris Lane fishing the Delaware River. Now get ready just like he fishes down in Florida. He said, all I looked for was eelgrass. And when that tide would drop out, he said the fish would funnel to the edge. And Chris Lane having a huge day four. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Look at that. Chris Lane going to town on this final day and now with a spinning rod in his hand. Exactly right, and Chris Lane said these fish would bite in flurries, you know, and, and this was the hardest time of day. Whenever that water started to rise, it would scatter them out, but Lane said, wherever I would get one bite, he said the fish were incredibly aggressive and I can catch two, three, and four after that. Chris Lane, again, having a good fourth and final day. Moving on up the leaderboard. Everyone, though, still chasing the man, Mike Iconelli. With time running out, 40 minutes remaining. He's done most of his damage for the day. And Iconelli will tell you the key to winning events on this river, whether it's a club tournament, a regional tournament, or a Bassmaster Elite Series tournament, figuring out how to catch him on high tide. He's using the high tide to get back in these areas. He said, if you can find him in high tide, you will win every event here. Oh. What's gonna happen here? Look at the, look at the clarity of the water. Uh-oh. What's gonna happen here? Gin clear. Isn't it wild how we're just, we're flip-flopping? River, main river creeks, main river creeks. We're just trying to read the fish, you know? Big one. Look at that. Delaware River Bass, Havoc Pit Boss, VMC Tungsten Weight, VMC Hook. You know what that equals? It's $100,000! Woo! Done. Nice call. Did I tell you it was going to happen? Came in here, saw the bait, saw the water clarity. Over. If you really think about it, did you ever think that he thought in his life, walking the shores here, that he would have a shot at winning a national tournament? Time to take it to weigh in. Wanna have some fun? Wanna have some fun? all coming together. The hometown favorite with all the confidence in the world coming in here. The crowd, it's 
been in place for hours, waiting for it to happen. We're getting ready for the wave. Always do it on my own, so I gotta get through it And the only thing I know is to love what I'm doing Never give up, never slow, till I finally prove it